Hey what's up this is Anomaly here. For this video we check out the Riot Division transformative jacket, so called because the pockets of the jacket can transform into a sling bag or a kind of waist belt thing, which is a pretty great idea, but that's something that I'll get to a little bit later in the video. Riot Division, for those of you who don't know, are a brand that I covered a couple of months ago in another video, a kind of up and coming Ukrainian techwear brand who recently have been gaining a little bit of exposure and have been coming up with a couple of cool pieces. Well, after Hid Devry's Instagram comment, they sent me this jacket for review purposes. So thank you very much to both Hid Devry's and Riot Division for this video. So this jacket retails at 300 US dollars and let's have a little look at what you can expect for your money. This is an all black hooded parka style jacket with heavy pocket detailing to the front and a belt around the back. This is a two layer jacket with a kind of mesh on the inside and a water resistant material on the outside. The layers of this jacket make it quite thick which is accentuated by these pockets so it definitely has a bit of bulk to it and it also makes it a relatively heavy piece. This makes it feel like quite a substantial jacket and warmer than a Gore-Tex shell. The outer material is designed for water resistance, so as you guys can see here, it did seem to hold up okay in this little bit of rain. I can't attest to its performance in very heavy rain over an entire day, but for this little test, it seemed to do just fine in terms of water resistance. You would be paying a lot more if this jacket was available in Gore-Tex, for example, and I think for most weather conditions, this kind of material is not going to be a problem. Further, all of the pockets are zipped and have taped seams, so hopefully you won't struggle with any water getting in from any of those. The hood is presumably also designed for wet weather. It has this sort of like jewel construction type thing. So there's a kind of under hood which goes underneath it, which presumably is designed to help get rid of water. You can also cinch this hood in. In practice, this didn't really seem to work that well. It seems like these little toggles don't actually grip the uh, elastic parts that well. Um, but for a little bit of extra protection, it'll do the job. Fit wise, this does seem to be a little bit oversized. Originally, I requested a large from Right Division um, and they suggested a medium would be better instead because it does fit a bit big, but then they sent me a large anyway. So there is a little bit of room to play with in this jacket. If you want to wear some layers underneath it, then true size is fine. But if you want to wear this kind of relatively light stuff underneath, then by all means go down a size. Mercifully, Riot Division have not taken the Adidas route and massively overbranded this jacket. There is a very small R to the breast and on the, the kind of strap that hangs down on one side, there is a little Riot Division logo as well. So it's pretty understated. It's by all means not over the top at all. So it's good that they've let the design of this jacket do the talking as opposed to kind of like sticking any massive streetwear branding on it, etc. So I like that. I think that's good. On to the most interesting and most obvious part of this jacket's design, the massive four pockets on the front. All of these have zip openings and they're secured by a zip to the top of the pocket and poppers at the bottom. This gives the jacket a modular ability. All four of them can be worn at once. Some can be removed for a slightly less bulky look, or you can remove all of them to make a bit of a sort of cleaner looking coat. You also have the option of stacking up all four pockets on the bottom. Removing all of these pockets reveals pockets which go into the inside of the coat. All of these four are still accessible with the main pockets attached. So with everything attached, there are a total of eight pockets on the front which is perhaps more than you could ever need, but it's good to have too many than not enough. If you need maximum storage or you really like that technical look, then you can keep them all attached. But if you wanna go for something a little bit cleaner or you wanna save some weight, then you can start removing some. But that's not the only exciting thing here. Once you've removed these pockets, you don't just have to let them sit off on the side. You can actually do something with them by turning them into either a sling bag or a utility belt type thing. So if you zip the smaller upper pockets kind of on top of those larger lower ones, and then you use the buckle that makes up for the the kind of belt of the main parka then you can attach that all together again and then you turn it into a nice little bag and of course depending on how tight or how loose you have it you can either use it as a sort of utility belt or as a sling bag i think both of these options look pretty cool and give you a pretty good amount of storage space seeing as when you've got these pockets zipped into each other you effectively have four different pockets so to have that on a sling bag or a kind of utility belt either of those is pretty cool on the Right Division official website, they use the utility belt kind of straight on, so you have a left pocket and a right pocket. Personally, I think it looks a little bit nicer if you wear it to one side, so you've got both pockets on the left or both pockets on the right. But if you don't already have this kind of bag, or you're looking for more accessories to up your techwear game, then this kind of thing is actually perfect. I personally don't really have anything that, that uses that utility belt kind of functionality. So even if I'm not wearing this coat, I can still get some wear out of it, which is pretty cool. And I think the sling bag looks 
looks nice as well. That's definitely something that I'm going to consider wearing over and above the Atom Sling that I normally take out. I think this is a really cool concept and for the most part it works pretty well. Those pockets are not really that difficult to remove and once you've got the hang of things you can swap between pockets being on the jacket and pockets being used as a bag without too much difficulty. The only criticism that I would have of this kind of setup is that the actual strap is not really that substantial, it is a little bit on the thin side. Um, I don't really think it's going to snap or anything, but normally with this kind of sling bag you would have a kind of like webbing type thing or something a little bit more sturdy. If you wanted to primarily use this as a bag or a belt, you could actually remove this little strap and then just replace it with something a little bit stronger. That would be a very easy little modification to do. But for me personally, most of the time I'm going to keep these pockets attached to the jacket itself. So it'll just be a kind of occasional use thing. And I think for that occasional use scenario, I don't really think you need anything to open over the top. I think this little kind of coat belt is going to do the job just fine. As if those eight external pockets weren't enough, there is also four on the inside, two on the left and two on the right of the jacket. Both of these are pretty substantial so you can fit quite a few things in there. Wallet, keys, phone, etc etc. So there's plenty storage space on the inside as well as the outside. Although I'm not really much of a headphone user myself, I did notice that on the internal pockets there aren't any of those little gaps that you can use to feed headphones out of. So if you do want to keep an iPod or a phone or something on the inside of the jacket, you do just have to feed the wire kind of out of the zip pocket as opposed to a little separate space. Another little detail to note about this jacket is that there are some ventilation zips underneath the arms, which is definitely a welcome addition. A couple of the jackets that I've reviewed recently have not had that, so that's definitely a nice inclusion. Um, this jacket does get a little bit warm, as I said earlier, it's a little bit warmer than a Gore-Tex shell. So being able to have that ventilation to just get rid of a bit of heat is definitely a welcome inclusion. In conclusion, I was pretty excited about this jacket because of that transformative potential. It's not really something that we've seen before in jackets, and I'm all behind people experimenting and trying new things. So as a very quick way to expand the techwear wardrobe, this kind of thing is definitely something to keep in mind. You could definitely make the argument that having a total of eight pockets on the front is overkill. Not that many people are going to want to use eight different pockets all at once. Uh, but from an aesthetic perspective, I do think it looks pretty cool. And let's be honest with ourselves here that techwear is as much um, about the look of functionality as it is with the, the actual functionality itself. Speaking of aesthetics, I do think that this jacket and a few other of Riot Division's latest things are starting to pick up a little bit of an aesthetic of their own. They definitely have some kind of tech ninja vibes going on and certainly some inspiration from ACG, Acronym, etc. But with a bit of a more sort of brutalist geometric -y sort of utilitarian spin on it. So I think going forward, um, we're going to start seeing more and more kind of cool, interesting things from Riot Division. So it's a brand to keep an eye on for sure. And if you are after a kind of like cool tech ninja -y looking shell jacket, but you want to save a little bit of money uh, compared to things like Arc'teryx, ACG, etc., then a jacket like this at a total cost of 300 US dollars, as opposed to sort of 600-ish for a good Arc'teryx or ACG one, uh, the modularity jacket is definitely something to keep in mind. So that's been everything. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you guys enjoyed checking out the modularity jacket. Um, I think it's a really cool and a really interesting piece. So let me know what you guys think of that sort of like three-in-one functionality between the jacket, the sling bag, and the utility belt. As always, if you did enjoy the video, then do make sure to give it that sweet, sweet like. I do really appreciate it. And uh, thank you for watching. So I will catch you in the next video. Shout out Gillian, I knew that someone would call me out for saying that something was a cool colour because it was black. And shout out to Artist Technology as well, who mentioned InCase as a brand that do cool bags and stuff. Um, I just thought that they only did phone cases, but apparently they've got some nice looking bags as well. Thanks for getting all the way to the end. If you liked the video, you want to see more, then of course links will be up there. And if you've watched a few of my videos and enjoyed them already, then why not hit that little subscribe button there, and then when new stuff comes out every week, then you'll be able to check that out.